Hey everybody, Aaron Rift here from NoDQ.com to talk about the greatest debuts in wrestling history. I'm defining a wrestler's debut as his very first appearance for a specific company. I asked people on Facebook and Twitter for their input, got a lot of responses here, and I've compiled a long list of some of the greatest debuts in wrestling history. Let's start off with a very big debut. The Rock making his very first appearance in a WWE ring at Survivor Series 1996. This was in Madison Square Garden. This was the perfect place to debut a new superstar. And right from the get-go, WWE was pushing The Rock as perhaps the next big thing. Jim Ross himself said on commentary, that guy right there is going to be the blue chipper. So WWE had high hopes on The Rock. And granted, it wasn't the Rock character that we've come to know and love. It was Rocky Maivia. Uh, he was very green and he was a clean cut baby face, an old school 80s style baby face. But on that night, he shined in the ring and, and uh, it did look like he had a lot of potential and um, it was a big night for him. He, he, he got his win in the Survivor Series match. So he, he kicked it off on a high note. I mean, what better way to debut? Madison Square Garden on a major pay-per-view, and you win your match. I mean, so big debut for The Rock at Survivor Series that year. Next up, Goldberg's debut in 1997 in WCW. The reason I included it on this list is because it was the start of the Goldberg streak, and um, it, it would be a sign of things to come. Goldberg came out there, made short work of his opponent, and um, he just pointed at the camera and said, number one. And uh, that was the start of what would be one of the greatest runs in WCW history and, and one of the biggest stars that WCW created. It all started on that night when Goldberg made his debut. I believe it was in Salt Lake City. Correct me if I'm wrong. But that was the start of the Goldberg era. Next on the list, Big Show's debut for WWE in 1999. And an honorable mention, um, Big Show as the Giant making his debut at WCW, um, wearing supposedly Andre the Giant's shirt and throwing it in Hogan's face. Um, Big Show debuted in WCW as the Giant right at the top, feuding with Hogan. That's an honorable mention, but I like this debut even better with WWE because this was a major signing, WWE signing, uh, Paul White away from WCW, and what better, I mean, this was a great way to debut him, have him get involved in the Stone Cold Steve Austin and Vince McMahon cage match main event, he literally comes from under the ring, rips through the ring, and uh, he he's so powerful, he picks up Steve Austin and throws him into the cage, and the cage just collapse collapses, and uh, I mean, it was a really spectacular visual to see Austin uh, literally break through the cage, and uh, he falls to the floor and wins the match. So I mean, it was a good it was a good way to debut Big Show, but have Steve Austin still win the match. So I, I actually thought it was really well done. And um, you know, Big Show was off to a good start with that debut. The Radicals in 2000. This was a huge debut because it wasn't just one guy. You had four guys, four uh, mid card superstars, and uh, guys that were on the verge of becoming main eventers come to WWE. This was a huge moment um, for WWE to pick up what many considered to be four of the most talented wrestlers, not just in WCW, but in the entire world. And now they were in WWE. And uh, they, you know, they just showed up at ringside randomly. And it, it was a huge shocker because um, you know people had known about all the turmoil with um, the radicals and, and WCW and all that craziness. But Nobody expected all four guys to just randomly show up on Raw. So, I mean, it was a really big deal at the time. And speaking of big deals, Eric Bischoff showing up on Monday Night Raw. This was something that you never thought in a million years you would ever see. And, um, you know, this should be at the top of the list for the greatest debuts in wrestling history. Um, the only thing I didn't like about it is that you could have done a Vince versus Eric feud uh, but still, to have the two of them embrace was completely surreal. Uh, something you never thought you would see. And just him being in a WWE ring was unbelievable. I mean, it was really uh, a, a special moment to see him on Monday Night Raw. And just, like I said, very surreal. And uh, Booker, Booker T said it best. Tell me I did not just see that. 
Diamond Dallas Page making his WWE debut. And, you know, technically he was at WrestleMania 6, but he was just uh, one of the Honky Talk Man's car drivers. So, you know, that doesn't count. This was officially DDP's WWE debut um, as uh, the man who was stalking The Undertaker's wife, Sarah. And this was really well done. When, when DDP came out, he was dressed in all black with a mask. He pulled off the mask and had this look in his eyes, and the crowd just went completely insane. I mean, it was so awesome, and, um, you know, the crowd was going nuts for this, and uh, in one night, DDP felt like this major superstar, and, uh, of course, WWE botched the whole thing with DDP, but at least on this one night, DDP felt like he was right up there at the level of Undertaker and Stone Cold and Kurt Angle. And uh, right around the same time, the debut of Rob Van Dam in WWE. This was during the Invasion storyline. And, um, you know, up, up to this point, it was WWE versus WCW. There was no mention of ECW. So for, for RVD and, you know, I had in Tommy Dreamer as well. For RVD and Tommy Dreamer to just show up randomly, um, it was a huge shock. And it, it was a turning point in the whole Invasion storyline. And uh, you, you knew something big was going down when these two guys showed up all of a sudden and then they aligned themselves with the WWE stars who were one time ECW stars. And uh, that was the start of the whole ECW, WCW um, alliance uh, invasion of WWE. Uh, next up, Kurt Angle making his debut with TNA Wrestling in 2006. And another honorable mention would be Christian's debut with TNA. But I think Kurt Angle's of all the guys to debut with TNA, I think that Kurt Angle's debut had the most impact and it was the one that was uh, the most memorable and the, and the best well done. Um, they, they announced Kurt Angle and they, they showed his face on the, on the uh, video wall and the crowd just went crazy in the impact zone. There were cell phone videos that were uploaded and the, the crowd just exploded in cheers. I mean, it was unbelievable. And I think it gave fans a lot of hope that um, TNA could compete with WWE. For them to be able to get Kurt Angle to come to their company, I mean, that was a huge deal. And in my opinion, uh, Kurt Angle was and still is to this day the biggest signing that TNA ever had. And, um, you know, I, I think that he's made more of a difference positively for TNA than anybody else in the company. And his debut was just awesome. And you, they put him right in there with Samoa Joe. So Kurt Angle uh, debut in TNA was definitely one of their one of their finest moments. The debut of the Nexus faction, and this was one of the all-time great Raw moments in recent history in the so-called PG era. Uh, just one of the most shocking moments in Raw history to have these guys from NXT all bond together and just destroy John Cena and destroy everything in their path. I mean, it was incredible. Um, it, was a, it was a rare must-see TV moment for WWE. And it was just a great way to debut a new heel faction. Unfortunately, the follow-up wasn't so great, but the debut, I mean, it was about as close to flawless as one could ask for. John Cena's debut in 2002. John Cena comes out, accepts Kurt Angle's challenge, and uh, this is a great way to debut a new superstar, have him get in the face of a top guy. And John Cena talks about having ruthless aggression, and this was during Vince's campaign, the ruthless aggression era. And Kurt Angle showed right from, or excuse me, John Cena showed right from the get-go that he was all about uh, ruthless aggression, and he had that intensity and the fire. And uh, I like, I really liked his debut a lot, and I think he uh, got a lot out of it. Even though uh, Kurt Angle beat him, it, it still uh, put John Cena over as a guy that um, was a force to be reckoned with. So I, I really did enjoy John Cena's debut with the company, and I, I, I find it to be one of the more memorable ones. And I'm um, speaking of memorable debuts, Brock Lesnar's debut that same year. Um, Brock Lesnar made his debut. He um, he was in Ohio Valley Wrestling, and before that, he was an NCAA champion. So he had this reputation. And when he came out there, he's just this freak of nature. But he's a freak of nature that is extremely athletic and uh, just extremely powerful. Uh, Brock Lesnar comes out and lays to waste everybody, and. Um, he had Paul Heyman right by his side, which was perfect. Paul Heyman as his mouthpiece. And uh, right from his first night in, you knew that this guy uh, was somebody that you did not want to mess with. So awesome debut for Brock Lesnar. And they pushed him right to the top as a dominant monster. Taz. Taz made his WWE debut in 2000 at the Royal Rumble. 
And uh, this was a really great way to debut somebody at a major pay-per-view like the Royal Rumble. You have Kurt Angle come out, issue an open challenge, out comes Taz, and uh, it's perfect because it's in New York City, so you have a lot of ECW fans in attendance, and they went absolutely crazy for Taz. The fans really made him come off like a main event superstar in his first night. And uh, that, to me, makes makes it a huge success for him. Uh, Taz comes out and uh, just chokes out Kurt Angle. And uh, right from the get-go, he is a serious contender. So WWE did everything right here, in my opinion, with the debut of Taz. But once again, you know, they made some mistakes afterwards. And the, the follow-up wasn't so great. But the debut, I mean, just about perfect. I, I really couldn't have done it a better way. And speaking of great debuts at MSG... CM Punk on uh, ECW on Sci-Fi uh, in the Hammerstein Ballroom. This was the perfect place to debut CM Punk. I mean, it's in New York City, so you have a lot of Ring of Honor fans there and um, a lot of diehard wrestling fans, and everybody in that building knew who CM Punk was. If he had just debuted in some random town, he wouldn't have gotten much of, re of a reaction, but he debuts here in Hammerstein Ballroom, and he gets a main event superstar pop. And the crowd was chanting CM Punk, so it was the perfect place to debut him. Um, and CM Punk, from his first night in, came off like a star. And one of my all-time favorite debuts, the debut of Kane in 1997 at Bad Blood. Uh, this was just a great way to debut a character, have him interfere in the main event. And uh, they had been teasing Kane's debut for several months. And uh, finally he came out, and you had Vince McMahon going crazy. It's gotta be Kane! And uh, it was just extremely memorable. Kane tombstones Undertaker. Shawn Michaels, who was laid out by Undertaker earlier, uh, puts one one arm over Undertaker and gets the win. I mean, it was great stuff. And uh, Kane Kane was like the uh, final topping on the cake. I mean, that, that one of the best matches in WWE history. And then you had and then you had that awesome debut. And uh, speaking of Undertaker, um, his debut at the 1990 Survivor Series. Um, what a great way to debut. I mean, WWE had been hyping up uh, this mystery uh, mystery partner for uh, the Million Dollar Man's team. And I don't think that anybody at home was expecting somebody like The Undertaker. This guy dressed in all black, this mortician type character uh, just coming out. And uh, they were panning to the crowd and all these people were, were terrified. I mean, it was great. And then Undertaker just dominated everybody in the ring. And then I guess he was counted out or DQ'd or something. I forgot. But um, right from the first night, um, they, they pushed him like this ultimate unstoppable monster. It was great stuff. And it led to one of the greatest runs in WWE history. And then one of the all-time great characters, The Undertaker. And finally, the number one greatest debut in wrestling history. The one who shocked the wrestling world. The Shockmaster. No, I'm kidding. Not the Shockmaster. The number one debut in wrestling history, I think everybody will agree with me for the most part. Chris Jericho debuting on Raw 1999, confronting The Rock. Uh, when the countdown hit, you know, everybody was excited. And uh, then all of a sudden you see the letters Jericho splash on the screen and the place just erupted. And uh, I was at home and I had goosebumps when I saw the letters. I, I was so excited and um, Chris Jericho came out and I was just so happy for him because... You, you, hear, you heard all the stories about him in WCW not getting pushed hard and not getting the opportunity. And here he is on Raw. First night in, he's uh, going face-to-face -face with The Rock. And um, he's, he's an instant superstar. So I thought that this was so cool. And they had the perfect music for him and the entrance and everything. And uh, the signs in the crowd uh, for Jericho. I mean, it was so cool. Jericho cut a great promo. And then The Rock uh, put him in his place. Very entertaining stuff. Uh, in my opinion, nothing topped that debut. Nothing was better than Chris Jericho making his debut in WWE in uh, 1999 as the Y2J character. All right, so that's my thoughts on uh, the greatest debuts in wrestling history. Uh, leave a comment on YouTube, youtube.com slash NoDQCAW. Let me know what you think. And stay tuned to NoDQ.com for all the very latest in WWE and TNA. Thanks for watching.